Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for this tutorial. I told you a couple of videos ago that I was going to try the velvet uh, texture spray again. And I decided I wanted to try it on a geometric styled cake that has some butter ganache. That's how I did the top and the um, geometric pattern on the bottom. And I also had asked or put out there that I didn't know if you could airbrush it. Well, somebody said you could, and guess what? You can. That gave me the confidence to try. So we're going to get started with the cake. And what I'm going to do here is show you how I make the butter ganache. Now, in the past, I have worked with regular ganache with chocolate with cream for my ganache. And I have honestly struggled with these types of designs, getting the chocolate to set up fast enough. And sometimes it wouldn't set up at all. So I'm, this, I'm just showing you the silicone mold and the plastic molds that I'm using there. Um, and once I discovered this butter ganache recipe, I'm telling you what, it has changed everything. Now, it's not cheap to make because butter and chocolate, you know, it's not cheap to make. And you don't want to skimp and use low quality ingredients in this or it might not turn out right. So I'm using the Ghirardelli chocolates and uh, just regular unsalted butter. You could use salted if you want to, but I just typically buy unsalted. And what I did was I melted the butter, added the chocolate to it on a double boiler, and then just mix them together. Now you can do this in the refrigerator, or I'm not refrigerator, the microwave. Uh, but for safety reasons, not safety, but to ensure that you're getting a good result, I prefer the double boiler. You can control the heat a little bit. Just make sure that none of that steam from the water in the in the bowl, in the pan, gets into the chocolate because that will ruin your chocolate. That's just my only, my words of advice there. Now I made four of the panels. I use a silicone mold, but I only am making using it to make panels. So I just poured it in the bottom, made sure that it was covering up any of the details. This is it right here. And then I put it in their freezer for about 15, 20 minutes and then just release it from the mold. Now this mold is meant for entremets. I believe that's what you call them. But since I don't really necessarily do those, I still love that geometric pattern. So I had ordered that. I got, I was gifted that from Timu uh, a while ago when I did a deal with them, which I wouldn't recommend. I won't say why, but I would not recommend ordering from them. I had some personal experience that, yeah, if you know, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash people or businesses, but I believe you can get those on Amazon also. So I will try to find that a link to one of those for you. And then, as you can see there, I just kind of struggled with my plastic one a little bit. But once they're cool, they should pop out fairly quickly. And that, again, only took about another, about a half an hour in the refrigerator to set up. And what I'm doing here is since I am making a panel, a square panel out of this, really it's a cube, um, I am cutting the corners, the edges, the two edges on the sides at a 45 degree angle so that when you butt them up together and use a little bit more of the butter ganache, they're going to make a seal. And just really or er, brush away extra of your butter ganache. You want to leave enough in there and it sets up pretty quick. I really was able to assemble this within minutes and then just pop it into the freezer to make sure that you got a good a good um, seal or connection. And then I, my cake there, it's, it's not real pretty. I will be honest, I recycled the cake in this video from a video I just recently did. I just, I just scraped it bare and started over again. I didn't have time to bake this week. So, you know, nobody's eating these, so there's no harm in reusing them. But so it wasn't real pretty underneath, but I would just do a good crumb coat of butter ganache underneath it or on top of the cake itself. Make sure that you have a good half an inch in between the size of the cake and your um, cube to make sure that you have room for a good enough layer. And what I did though, is I went back in and I piped in some more butter ganache in between the panels and the cake to fill that in. And I put that in the freezer to um, set up for about 10 minutes. Well, actually I was like, okay, I'm accidentally lying to you. I put it in the refrigerator because I knew this was gonna take some time. So <laughs> it'll set up in the refrigerator just as well. It just takes a little longer, but I had time. So this one is coated in dark chocolate ganache, 
but you'll notice it doesn't matter because I knew I was going to do the spray, the velvet spray, and it is white. So it's going to mute down the color between the, the white butter ganache and the, the regular ganache. Um, but adding the airbrush color to it on top, I knew you weren't going to see a difference in the color. So, you know, I would probably, if you're starting fresh, just go ahead and use butter ganache to cover your cake before putting your details on here. The mold that I use, that plastic one, is meant to be used in a panel, but I have used it before. I think it was my 50K video or 75K video. I used the same mold, but I found that it was kind of hard to work with because when you scrape it down, you end up scraping away a lot of that chocolate in between, like in the nooks and crannies there. And I kind of struggled with it. So I thought, why don't I just go ahead and just fill in the pattern and release those and place them however I want. Also, it's a square, so you don't know how are you going to wrap that around those corners, right? On a circle, it makes more sense. But on the square, yeah, I just did it this way. And I liked it. It worked, it worked great. What I'm doing here is I know I'm going to want to paint those lines. So I'm just using ribbon, quarter inch ribbon. And since there's a little bit of condensation, they stuck right to the chocolate. And use those to kind of tape off those lines. Now I'm using the spray. I find that this is a holy, holy mess but it's really cool. It's worth the mess. So I'm just doing quick little spurts of, uh, kind of like when you're using um, spray paint. You don't want to settle on one spot too long. You want to move it and, and spray it as you go so that you get a, a more even coating. There are a few spots that I got a little heavy handed, but who's going to know unless you tell them, like I just told you. <laughs> it's okay. So I went ahead and I removed those. And then I'm going in, I could have left them for the airbrushing color. Trying to think as I'm talking, would that have made more sense? You know, it worked out fine. I think either way would be just fine. So anyway, what I did this time was I went ahead and removed them. And then I'm going in with the airbrush color. I'm going for the nooks and the crannies first and then um, go back and do the surface. Now, I could have gone back and done another coat, but I kind of liked how it had kind of a dusty blue kind of look to it. You could still kind of see through it a little bit. And uh, my depth was in all the details, the crevices, and I kind of like that. So it's really also kind of hard to get all of those sides. You would go through a lot of airbrush color, and that's fine. But the color I used was airbrush. It was a blue with a little bit of black. Because I knew what colors I wanted, wanted in the flowers that I decorated this with. I knew I wanted some brighter colors. The contrast between the depth of the cake and then the brightness of the flowers, I thought would be really pretty. And that blue was one of those flowers. So that's kind of what I was, where my inspiration was coming from. And then I'm just using a combination of gold luster dust, my go-to, gold luster dust, and Everclear to paint in these crevices. Now it's kind of hard to get it perfect, but that's okay. I did have to go back and do it twice just because chocolate's harder to paint. And then I did a splatter on the rest. The same luster dust and Everclear, a little thinner. Dip your brush in it and just kind of throw it at the cake. Tap it against your hand if it gets a better look that way. That's fine too. The wall behind you will have splatters. So <laughs> you might want to leave that box up that I used to um, try to keep my surface as clean as possible. Because that, that spray, that texture spray is a cocoa butter and it gets on everything. And it's very hard to clean everything. You kind of have to scrape it off of your surfaces. So be prepared for that. But again, very well worth it. And here are the flowers I got. These are artificial and I'm attaching them with some, uh, what did I use? Some chocolate ganache, I believe is what I used. You could use some more of your butter ganache. You could use buttercream. You can put straws in there if you prefer. If it were for an order, I probably would do that. So here's our final result. I really kind of like the, the colors on this. I think this is a little different. And you know me, I always like a little different. So I hope you liked it. I hope you got something from this and please like, subscribe and share. 
help get me to 200k guys that's my new goal i appreciate y'all and i will catch you on the next one